Right, so we're fueling up for wood spread. Delta Delta lining up the runway 35 thereafter towards the splits. And Link 861, carry the active runway 35. Yeah, but we're climbing so slow, eh? Okay, we'll loiter around here for you. Uh, this is not working. The problem is the terrain is rising there. How are you guys holding up? Yeah, we have our hands full. Cooling down a little bit. Oh, we are on our way to Hood Sprite. Having uh, cooling issues, so Maurits is nursing us up. We are now approximately 30 miles south of Hood Sprite. And um, yeah, it's going slow. 2,100 foot. And um, I think we're gaining maybe 100 foot every couple of miles. So we got a hood spray in sight and with Maurits's excellent lighting capabilities we made it to 2,700 foot. Uh, a lot of things in the red there, but all trusty is doing well. Yeah. So maybe I must just explain to the guys what happened here. Yeah. The blade of this propeller is smaller and a thinner blade and uh, the efficiency changed. So the engine loading changed. Um, and in this case, it changed for the worse where um, everything is running high. Uh, we're running at high airbox temperatures, high water temperature. The oil is okay. Uh, exhaust gas is also on the high side, so which means the engine is running leaner. And um, all these things add up. And uh, with a 33, 34 degrees outside temperature, uh, it becomes a challenge. And um, so we were skimming over the Kruger Park and uh, only now, about 10 miles before it's spread, we actually ma managed to gain enough altitude uh, to level off a little bit and, and uh, cool the engine down. It's the coldest hand that run down this land Where the ocean lands It's the tallest sound, the damn smallest crowd But their hearts break loud Far from ever feeling lost with me I'll push you back towards the land and sea uh, okay, so how was your landing? My landing? Uh, Thomas was very impressed. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. kidding. So, Mr. Instructor? For the first time landing a safari, I think I was very impressed. Okay, but, well, uh, so I can check that out. Yes. Yeah. Okay, you can cool. also just give me the plane if you want. <laughs> well. <laughs> but, uh, no, it was good. It was a bit of a bat of uh, little floats. Uh, but I stayed on the runway, which was quite different than when I was flying the Boswell I went off slightly. Maybe I shouldn't say that. But it was good, and now I'm ready for lunch, and I think after that we're gonna swim. It's hot. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Just one beautiful paint. Sunny Bonani. Sibuga Pambi. So, mom and dad will be staying in this room. 
Five star? Well, we can both shower because it's an indoor and an outdoor shower. <gasps> I'm going to do the outdoor oh, shower. Nice. <laughs> and Thomas and I will be staying in the kiddies' room. But it's also stunning. Faith and Gladys. Good. So you pronounce it Unimbeza. Unimbeza. Does it mean anything or is it just a made up name? Okay, you say Unimbeza is Zulu and it's consciousness. Yes. Now being conscious of oneself. Here is the man. What a view. plenty of stories about this tree actually. <laughs> yes. um, so the actual name for it in Afrikaans is the Blink Parwach, as Stefan was saying. In English it's called the Buffalo Thorn. So what buffaloes will often do because of the hook thorns and the straight thorns, they'll actually reverse into it when they are being attacked by lions if there's one close by because then they can cover their rear because that's obviously where the lions will be trying to go for the buffalo to try and exhaust it. So if their rear is protected they can then defend themselves with their horns and their bosses. So they often do survive because of this tree. Now, an, an alternative name for the tree is also the tree of life because the fruit of the buffalo thorn is actually edible to humans as well. Um, now, the sort of spiritual side of it and why they call it the tree of life is if you look at the branches, it's very sort of zigzag. So nothing in life is ever just straight. There's always one twist, another twist, you need to make your own path. But then you look at the straight thorn and it's got the hook thorn. So in order to know where you're going with your future, you need to know where you came from with your past. Okay. So it's a very, very held in very high regard and high esteem in the, in the guiding fraternity and also in the local belief. Okay. So if a family member was to die, um, sort of one of the eldest members of the family would actually go to the spot of where the family member passed away take a branch and I'll sweep it over the area and the hookthorns are said to capture the spirit of that person now in order for the person then to be reunited with the body the family member needs to travel back home and everything he does you need to do as if the family member is still alive
Hi guys, so we just completed our stay here at uh, Unembeza, no? Yes. And um, yeah, it was excellent. The service was good. Steph was thank treating you. us very, very well. And also thank you to Joris, I think, is his yeah, name? Yes. Yeah, the owner. And uh, this is an excellent place, man. We highly recommend it. Right next to the runway. Yeah. Uh, within walking distance. Yeah. If, if Thomas organizes it, it's within <laughs> walking distance. Uh, if you're like me and I'm super fit and not overweight, then it's just around the corner. Yeah, exactly. That's a good <laughs> flying distance. Don't believe me. Guys, welcome to the Aerotel in Hootspreet. This is a very unique setup. Behind me, you see a Boeing 737-200, which was being converted for uh, accommodation. So they have six rooms. The rooms are named after different cloud formations, and this is a unique destination. I would highly recommend it, especially if you're a pilot or interested in aviation. This is the right place for you to be. Come and uh, visit these guys, support them. How cool is this floor? A whole map. Stunning place, people. Look at that inviting pool. <laughs> I think I'm definitely going to jump in there. Morning guys! What's the weather looking like today? Not very good. Ooh. It's not so bad over here. Yeah. But at Joburg it seems pretty bad. I am uh, investigating alternatives. What's our routing going to be for today? Don't you have an instrument rotor? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we'll probably go from here to the Blader Canyon and then fly Groblos Dal. Assess the situation and then decide where to go. And otherwise, we'll just extend our stay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, we are leaving. Uh, the weather looks good over the mountain, but it looks very bad at Petite. So I think we might have to di divert. We'll see along the way. We've got some al uh, alternatives. Um, I just need to get away early for the cooling issue on my plane. But I can see the mountain there. It looks good. Stefan and figure. his kids. <laughs> <laughs> On the road trip. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. So we're this also is, all matching yeah, exactly. We're all white shirts. <laughs> all right, we're ready to go. We are ready, and the weather's looking pretty good. Well, I think you are a little bit optimistic, so we'll see. Uh, we're going to go to the Blader Canyon, and uh, if we see that the weather is not uh, very good, we'll turn around. But for now, we're going to route to Hobbestal. Uh We no rush. If we have to sleep another night somewhere, we'll do that. Exactly. Fingers That's crossed, it. though. <laughs> See you guys. So Rosita and I are having a little bit more fun trying to get air, uh, altitude. <laughs> so, but it looks like we're doing okay. It's still cool. The weather is looking reasonable. Uh, I think we'll definitely make it to Hoblestal and then we'll assess the weather again. Woohoo! Ah, so we're flying a little bit in the rain. Uh, I think we're now at Steelport. And, uh, but in the front it's open so it doesn't look so good in the back or at the back uh, but it's all good the valley is open there 
front is clear. Rosita is getting a bit wet here on the inside, taking a shower. So I'm just covering the rain with my hands. Yeah, this plane was built for uh, hot conditions, <laughs> not for cold conditions. Oh, that looks like a steel port mine. Not sure what they're mining here, but it uh, looks like a good runway to use. Yep, so we decided to uh, divert to Middleburg. Uh, it's cleared up a little bit of rain to our left, but I think we'll be fine. Uh, we're starting to eat the turbulence, and um, but Rosita's doing very well, man, keeping us straight and level. Ah, the weather is looking much better. Uh, I was actually worried this morning we're not going to make it so. At the back there it's still raining, but uh, clearing up in the front. And it looks like on the right hand side it's also raining, so we just got a gap through the weather, yeah, we're very lucky. Got about uh, 14 minutes to run to Middleburg. Uh, yeah, nearly there. I think Tom is rushing for the bathroom, so he's overtaking us now slowly. So as you guys can hear, it's quite windy. We just made it to Middleburg. And um, look what we found. Little Annie. And the two of us are here. So uh, from now, from here we will be heading off to Petite. Uh, we're just finding out what the weather is like. It looks like it just rained here. Uh, everything is wet. So I think we were just behind the rain. Very lucky. I beat the scenery at Petite. Definitely. Okay, so we're slowly working our way up to 6,000 foot. And uh, Maurits has now joined me. Yeah, back in the better plane. <laughs> and uh, it's actually quite cool. You can see all the trees on the ridge line. Because yeah. it probably rained just before it. Yeah, so it is a bit bumpy. But uh, at least we're flying. And it looks like we might be skirting around that weather there. So I hope so. We, uh, it's quite early in the morning still, so we, sh we should have a bit of time before the thunderstorm starts. Okay, so we are now about 13 minutes from Petit. Uh, the weather gave us a break, so we made it. I think all's good. Uh, we're not uh, going to win any races with the speed, but uh, we're getting there at least. Winning our one-man race. Yes. Okay, guys, so we uh, made it back safely to Petit. Um, Moritz and Rosita and Thomas have left already. Uh, they are going on to their next adventure, which they'll tell you about. What a great uh, couple of days. We, we had some interesting flying. We saw some beautiful places, met some very, very nice people. And it just shows you the flying community uh, is a tight knit group of people. And just uh, people in general are uh, very accommodating and helpful. So uh, we will definitely be doing this again. And uh, we'll hope you guys will join us on the next one. See you then.